So when we get on to looking at the binomial distribution, um, there are a certain number of key features that we need to have in mind to make sure that the situation that we're actually considering is valid. Okay, so the first thing is that there must be a fixed number of trials. Okay, that's the first thing. Now, the secondly, each of those trials must be either a success or a failure. There must be the two options. So binomial, meaning the two options. Um, the each trial uh, must be independent, okay, of the next. So the probability of getting one uh, must not affect the probability of getting another in the next trial. Um, and, of course, the probability, as you work through, must remain constant as well. Okay, so the probability can't change after each trial. So, we're going to look at these three situations. We're kind of going to assess whether a binomial model would suit it or not. So, this first one, uh, the number of throws of a fair six-sided die until a four appears. Well, there is a key problem with this, and that is that there is no fixed number of trials. Okay? Um, we don't know how many times we're going to throw that dice. Um, so, because there's no fixed number of trials, we cannot model it using a binomial distribution. The second one, the number of boys in a family of five children. Okay, well... Um, there's certainly a fixed number of trials, five children, okay, so there's five children. Um, each trial would be success or failure, so either a boy or a girl. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, quintessentially a boy is a success and a, uh, a girl is a failure, okay, but that's just an unfortunate use of the words uh, going with the uh, situation, okay. So... You could just as well say the number of girls in a family of five children and the probability of success will be the probability of getting a girl. Okay, so you could have it either way. So, yes, we have those two options. Okay, success and failure. The trials are independent. Um, well, this is um, assumed to be true. Um, the fact that if you have... Uh, one boy uh, as a child, uh, the probability of another boy or another girl shouldn't be changed by the fact that it was a boy the last time, okay? Um, and the probability of success will remain constant throughout the probability of, uh, of getting a boy, so it should be um, a half, okay, if we're in an ideal world. Um, so what we could then say is we could model this using a binomial distribution where we've got a fixed number of uh, children, five, and the probability of getting a boy will be one half, so 0 0.5. Okay, so that's how we could model that situation. So let's have a look at this, sec uh, this third one. The number of blue counters selected when four are picked from a bowl that contains 20 blue counters, eight red counters, and 12 yellow counters. Now, um, are there a fixed number of trials? Yes, we're picking four uh, from the bowl. Um, each trial should be success or failure. So we either get a blue counter or we don't. Now, the fact that there are red counters and yellow counters don't matter. Okay, it doesn't matter about that. We can just look at it as blue counters and not blue counters. Okay, so success and failure work that way. The trials are independent. Now, what you've got to think about here is that, and this leads on to looking at whether the probability is constant or not. What you've got to think about is, well, if we have uh, no replacement. So if once we've picked a counter out, if we replace it, then the probabilities won't change. That's fine. If we draw that counter out, 
and we don't put it back, the probabilities will change. And so the binomial model will not work. So assuming that we have replacement, then we would be looking at a binomial distribution where we've got four trials, and the probability of success is 20 out of the total. So there's 20 out of 40, so it'd be 0 0.5 again. Okay? That is based on the fact that there is a replacement. If there's no replacement, then it won't work.